you are listening to socialtv.co.za with myself, Noktula Kwela. In our top stories, government revises plan to roll out 33,000 Wi-Fi hotspots and ropes in small businesses. And Heart and Stroke Foundation SA commemorated World Hypertension Day 2022. In our top story, a program to connect over 33,000 community Wi-Fi hotspots over the years will rope in small businesses for internet infrastructure services. As government rolls out a revised plan for the project, the public broadband plan, known as SA Connect, was approved by government in 2013 to improve connectivity in public spaces. It aims to roll out 33,539 community Wi-Fi hotspots to cater to 5,832,008,000,000 households over three years. But rollout has been slow and hampered by budget constraints. In a recent address to Parliament's Minister of Communications and Digital Technology, Kumbo Zondaveni said, the revised model for SA Connect would include a partnership with internet service providers, access network service providers, and mobile virtual network operators in the small business sector. The minister said the collaboration was part of government's commitment to the transformation of the telecommunications industry through supporting emerging players. The SA Connect drive will expand from the core network owned by Broadband Infraco, other state-owned entities, and telecommunications infrastructure operators as well as a satellite service of Centec, she said. Moving on to our next story, since 2005, the World Hypertension Lead, WHL, has promoted World Hypertension Day on May the 17th annually. The primary aim of this health event is to increase the awareness of the dangers of high blood pressure or hypertension in populations around the world. The call to action for World Hypertension Day is to promote best practices to stay up to date with global standards in hypertension prevention and measurement and to standardize these measures globally in order to monitor the prevalence within countries and across countries. Key stakeholders in the health space are said to achieve the goal for hypertension control in Africa by the year 2030. In 2022, the focus is on low to middle income countries as the consequences of hypertension in these countries lead to very poor health outcomes, in particular, making individuals more vulnerable to heart diseases, strokes, and other circulatory diseases. Given the rise in the prevalence of hypertension in LMICs over the past 25 years, interventions for hypertension control are urgently needed. One in three people are aware of their hypertension status, with only approximately 8 percent of them having their blood pressure controlled. It has been projected that three quarters of all adults in hypertension a recently released by Resolve to Save Lives, RTSR and Medicine Sans Fronteras SMF shows the excessive and inequitable hypertension medication pricing hinders efforts to control high blood pressure in low and middle income countries. LMICs. High blood pressure known as hypertension is the world's leading cause of death, killing more than 10 million people every year. More than all in infectious diseases combined. Three quarters of people with high blood pressure live in LMICs, but fewer than one in 10 people with hypertension in LMICs is effectively treated. Increasing access to affordable, safe and essential hypertension medicines can save millions of lives. Under pressure strategies to improve access to anti-hypertensive medicines in low and middle income countries is the first report of its kind and reveals large disparities among countries in hypertension drug affordability and availability. It also serves as a roadmap to help policymakers, pharmaceutical manufacturers and health advocates achieve the World Health Organization's goal of reducing hypertension prevalence by 33% globally between 2010 and 2030. In our final story, being accepted into tertiary is a high point for thousands of matriculants every year. What many of them don't realize, however, is that the transition from school to university can be a lonely one, fraught with unexpected challenges. My Ways, My Heart Project is evolving to prepare learners to navigate the scary time in a young person's life. Former mentee from Maputa High School in Tembisa and a current bursary holder in her final year of university, Yolanda Musana tells us how she adapted successfully to university life. Yolanda is now in her final year of studying towards a bachelor's of science, computer science rather, degree at Udivis, a private university in Midran. She says, the My Heart leaders in the Making Mentorship program helped her to build confidence and self-esteem and push herself harder. 
In her words, the personal mentorship I received from my way executives when I was in grade 12 helped prepare me for university, which is so different from school. I think the mentorship and guidance I received as part of the My Heart Leaders in the Making program equipped me to be self-disciplined and that helped me to handle the transition to university and then home-based study better than many of my peers. My advice to grade 12s who are preparing for university is to enjoy, have fun and connect with people. You won't find the workload too much to handle if you choose the right course, something you are really interested in. It's also important to focus on time management, try to study daily instead of waiting for things to pile up because that becomes stressful when exam time approaches. To recap our top stories, government revises plan to roll out 33,000 Wi-Fi hotspots and robes in small businesses. For more CSI news, you can visit our website at www.socialtv.co.za.